What's up everybody? It's been a minute. It's been about eight months, but I'm finally back. I've cleared my schedule. I've pivoted my YouTube channel. That was kind of an experience. I was putting off a lot of things, a lot of obligations, and I had to clear through them in order to be able to do this full time. In any case, I've arrived. This is episode four of Wild Edibles Test Kitchen. And in today's episode, I'm going to teach you how to make micro Malva wraps, mini Malva wraps, something of that nature. So stick around. It should be fun and educational. Springtime is here, hopefully. It was snowing the other day, but hopefully springtime is finally coming. And so my plan moving forward is to try and do at least two of these episodes a month. We'll see how that goes, but that is the plan anyway. So that's kind of what's been going on behind the scenes. And without dilly, dilly dallying too long, I just uh, wanted to kind of give you guys an update. This is a recipe that was taught to me by David Wolf, my friend David Wolf, who is an author and superfood extraordinaire. I believe he's actually responsible for coining the phrase superfood. I might be wrong, but I don't think so. Anyway, when I was 13 years old, my folks sent me to live with David for about a week. And during that time, I learned all kinds of cool stuff. And it just so happens that he was one of my first foraging instructors. I recall sitting with him in his backyard in San Diego or Del Mar or something like that and wrapping little slivers of avocado in this wild okra relative. David, if you're watching this, I have to pay credit where credit is due. Thank you very much for the knowledge and I never forgot many of your lessons. So in the first three episodes of this show, you might recall that a lot of effort was put out to going to the forest and harvesting plants. In some of the episodes, I was even sweating profusely. In this show, I want to be as authentic as possible. And part of that is showing you that when you sign up to forage and harvest food from the wild, sometimes you're going to exert a lot of effort. That's just the name of the game. That being said, that's not always the case. You can kind of choose your own adventure. And in this video, I want to demonstrate my point by showing you how simple it could be. Sometimes when you go to forage wild edibles, it's actually more convenient than going to the store and buying vegetables because you don't really have to travel very far at all. In fact, behind me is my house and where we're going to be foraging today is right over there, about 25 feet away. We're going to be harvesting some common mallow. Enough rambling. Let's go and do it. Ready, set, go. Zoom. So I was just sitting right over there on the table and where we're going to harvest is right over there at the stump. So I got to walk from there to there. I figure that's about 25, 30 feet. And so that doesn't take very much effort at all to walk over here to get some delicious wild edible grub. And so the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to sit here and identify it together because that's quickly becoming our tradition. We want to build that healthy search image in our minds, that folder that's going to help us remember wild edibles for life. And the way that we're going to do that is by studying them meticulously and describing them to ourselves. So here we go. This is common mallow. This is a wild edible relative of okra which is a cultivated vegetable. How I would remember this plant for life is I would sit here and look at it very carefully. To me, this looks like the leaf generally has a round shape to it. If you look really closely at the edges, they're somewhat serrated, but they're serrated with kind of like round serrations. While it's round, it also has kind of a hexagon shape to it, a hexagonal or hexagonal, if I may butcher the English language. And so these are all really good identifying characteristics. It's a hardy leaf, somewhat resembling of maybe like a collard or a kale in terms of texture. When I flip it over, I notice that it has very easy to distinguish veins. The underside is a lot lighter and it also has a notch in it. That's another a good identifying characteristic. This plant has um, a slimy consistency to it just like okra. And so the leaves, as well as the stem, as well as the fruits and the flowers, they act as really good binding agents in recipes. So if you're making a green smoothie, for example, you know that they have this tendency to separate after you blend them. And if you add a little bit of mallow to your smoothie, it'll help bind everything together. Likewise, if you're making a soup, like a gumbo or just a stew, uh, you can use 
mallow leaf to kind of hold it all together and thicken it up. In fact, recently I was making a recipe from the Meat Eater book by Steve Rinella. Last fall I harvested a wild turkey and I decided to turn that wild turkey into a pozole from Steve Rinella's book. And so I did that last week and it turned out absolutely delicious. And of course, in true Sergei style, I started butchering the recipe and altering it almost instantly. So Steve, if you ever watch this episode, <laughs> I'm sorry and thank you. In any case, uh, these are some of the identifying characteristics. If you look at the entire plant as a whole, you'll notice that it's quite bushy. It grows low to the ground and it has these very unique stems like that. It's still pretty early in the season and this is a very cold year. So unfortunately we don't have any fruits to look at. When this fruit, when this uh, plant starts to fruit, it starts developing little round discs, little tiny discs. These are the fruits of the common mallow plant and they are essentially wild okras. This plant also develops little flowers that have five petals. The flower color can range from white to pink to purple. And so those are all really good identifying characteristics later on in the year. But as we sit here, we have no such luck. So we have to learn to identify it by the leaves and the stems and the general growth pattern. As I already mentioned, this plant, common mallow, is related to the okra. And so a couple years ago, I decided to plant some okra in my garden and then compare and contrast the two. And I made a video about it. So if you're curious, I'll leave a link to it in the description below. My biggest takeaway, spoiler alert, was that this plant had much longer root systems. I'm talking five, 10 times longer than okra. And thus, I would argue that this plant is much healthier for you to consume because those long root systems were able to go down below the topsoil and draw out more vital minerals and nutrients, which then, when I consume it, go directly into my body. The roots of this plant were so long, in fact, that I threw out my back trying to pull it out of the ground. For those interested, some of the nutritional highlights of common mallow are uh, that it's rich in minerals copper, calcium, and iron, plus vitamins A and C. And it also has a high amount of beneficial mucilage, which helps to alleviate colds, flus, and coughs. So it's really good for your respiratory system. The weather out there is starting to turn, starting to rain. Let's see if we can beat it and harvest some of these leaves real quick. Because we're making mallow wraps, we obviously want bigger leaves because these are gonna be wraps. And so we're gonna be looking for leaves approximately this size and leaving the smaller leaves for later on. And so you can either just pull them, which is just fine, or you can go through with scissors and just snip the tops like so. It's a little bit easier with scissors. And so I like to incorporate scissors into my foraging practices and so that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm probably gonna set the camera down here in a second because it's much easier to do this with two hands instead of one. That's more than enough for some mallow wraps. There's no need to be greedy. Now I'm gonna go and wash up and get ready for the cooking portion but I just spotted a couple dandelions, so I might just pick a couple flowers in order to put some garnish on this recipe. This video is sponsored by me and my books. I publish eBooks and books on different topics and the money generated from these sales helps me fund new projects just like this one. If you like my content and wanna help me create more of it, go buy my books. Print and digital titles now available on Amazon and at sergeybutenko.com. The next step after we harvested our greens and washed them is to come through and cut off some of these stems it just makes the experience a little bit better. And so just real quickly, we're gonna do that. 
So this recipe is super duper simple. It's going to have one, two, three, four, five ingredients, three food ingredients, and a couple condiments. It consists of mallow, avocado, lemon, and then I like to hit it with some sea salt and some hot sauce because I like spicy foods. One of the tricks to picking out a really delicious avocado is looking at the skin. If the skin is kind of matte, not very shiny, then the inside is gonna be very creamy and just delicious, kind of rich yellow color. If it's shiny and very light green, your avocado is gonna be stringy. Nobody likes stringy avocados. Thus, I recommend you look for more of the matte, kind of hazy skin. Careful not to cut through your skin, through the avocado skin, rather, because if you do that, then you're gonna have red marks on your palm. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a mallow leaf and we're gonna put some avocado on it, just like so. One or two pieces. We're gonna hit it with a little bit of lemon juice. We're gonna hit it with a pinch of salt. And then we're gonna sprinkle some hot sauce on it. And that is one hell of a snack, you guys. Check it out. You can eat them open-faced. It's probably a little bit easier to see what we're making here. Or you can roll them, which I'm gonna show you in a second, and make the actual micro wrap that I was talking about. If you wanna get really gourmet, you can put a toothpick in it. So we're just gonna wrap it like so. And then stick a toothpick in it. And then it's just a simple process of repeat, repeat, repeat until you have enough finger food to satisfy your hunger, to feed your friends, to feed your wife, and life is good. And then you can start arranging them beautifully on a plate. The neighbor's running his compressor all of a sudden. I swear every time I hit the record button, the audio starts getting just crushed by some external noise. If you're doing this for yourself, great. If you're doing it for a potluck, even better. You can literally become a hero when you attend a food gathering with your friends without breaking the bank, an avocado costs what, like $1.65, two bucks? Common mallow's free, a lemon is a dollar. Condiments are cheap. And it's something no nobody else will think of. So don't be that guy or that girl that brings a bag of chips to the next potluck. Try something different. Bring mini mallow wraps instead. You can also batch them, so make a bunch at once. It's probably a little easier, actually. Maybe I should have done that to begin with. I'm hitting these with nutritional yeast, because everybody likes that. Joey's all around. And then, toothpicks. It's starting to get really cold, actually, so if you see me shaking, it's because it's cold outside. And I'm gonna start hurrying up. I wanna go inside and get warm. If you wanna make your food completely next level, decorate it. Because the prettier it looks, the better it'll taste. These are dandelion flowers. I imagine we'll talk about them in a later episode. Real quickly though, they concentrate vitamin D. And so on cloudy days like today, when you're vitamin D deficient, plopping a couple of these in your meal, in your mouth, is just gonna make everything better. You gotta admit, that looks pretty. Am I right or am I right? Leave comment below. I wanna hear from you. My mouth is watering, I'm getting cold, so I better try it and then I'm gonna sign off. Here goes nothing. Mmm, delicious. Mmm. That's it, that's all. Thanks so much for watching. Like I already said, I'm gonna try and do this more regularly. So pray for warmer weather. And subscribe to my channel, Butenko Films, for more videos that are just like this, but completely different. Ciao. They're a little messy. If you made it this far, 
This is the secret part at the end of the video. It's been exactly a week since I filmed the mini mallow wraps. And as you can see, the weather has improved significantly, which is good news for foraging, good news for the show. And I just wanted to quickly come over and show you how much the mallow has grown since I filmed it. So this is a week later. Look at that. Look how big these leaves are. I mean, these things are massive. You can only imagine that a leaf this big would make a much better wrap. So, you better believe I'm gonna make more of them for myself and my wife. I can't believe how fast these things grow though. Look at these things. I mean, I was literally sitting right here. And I was reaching down, and now this thing is at knee level. So just thought you might be interested to see how much weeds can grow in a short span of time. This is Sergey, over and out.